current state of cybersecurity for retail is one where it's whack-a-mole. Everything's growing and the threats are growing every single day. This is a, a thankless job. You're the offensive lineman of the retail environment. You only hear about the CISO when something goes wrong, uh, if there's been a hack. And yet you have to be correct 100% of the time to protect the enterprise with the operations as well as the data security that is in play. Now, when you add into this AI, the first reaction for the CISO is threats. It's not opportunities. The first reaction is the threat. And that comes from the fact that the threat vector has increased dramatically as a result of the generative AI being loose in the world. And so the first reaction to that is how do I protect and use AI to do that? I can't do that with my existing tools, and I may not be able to do that all by myself whether it's the use of digital twins or outsourced vendors to help what you're doing, whether you're large or small, the increase of that threat vector with the use of AI is a major, major threat. This area is also the one area of retail technology spend that is not seeing a decrease. Uh, the IT security budget continues to increase. It was as high as 14% of the overall IT budget that continues to increase as a percentage of that, even as more and more of the budget moves towards AI overall, cybersecurity is being a big part of those AI tools as the first level of tools that retailers operate with. AI significantly altering the cybersecurity landscape in retail and is quite remarkable. One of the most profound changes is the enhancement of threat detection. With AI, we're able to analyze data in real time, which means threats can be identified almost as soon as they emerge. This rapid detention is crucial for maintaining the integrity of retail systems and protecting sensitive customer data. Another major shift is the automation of responses to security incidents. AI doesn't just detect threats, it also responds to them, often without the need for human intervention. This automation speeds up the response time and reduces the potential damage caused by security breaches. Lastly, AI's role in improving fraud detection cannot be overstated. Through sophisticated machine learning algorithms, AI systems are constantly learning and adapting to new fraudulent patterns. This means that AI can detect fraud more accurately and efficiently, which is essential for the trust and safety of our customers and business alike. In essence, AI is not just changing the cybersecurity landscape, it is revolutionizing it. It is providing retail businesses with the tools they need to protect themselves and their customers in an increasingly digital world. The major ways that I think AI is changing the cybersecurity landscape in retail are really about how uh, companies can move more swiftly to build scalable commodity services. Some of the retail customers that I work with build store fronts for customers to check out digitally. They go online and shop. And a lot of times those store fronts are built via methodology called infrastructure as code. So the deployment of assets in the cloud are deployed automatically based on programming templates. But when you deploy that quickly, sometimes there is an opportunity for a gap analysis. And so I think what AI is allowing chief information security officers, as well as individual contributors in security operations to do, is systematically review gap analysis on infrastructure as it's deployed in real time, and also monitor threats in the form of alerts and incidents that come off of various security technology in, in different ways. When it comes to the use of AI by the CISO, I guess the best uh, analogy to use is that from sports. Defense wins championships. And the first opportunity and reaction is to have the right tools necessary to protect the operation by leveraging AI to identify these threats faster, react to those, shut down particular threats, shut down open ports, and be very cognizant of what's going on overall. But you can also play offense, whether that's through training, whether that's through recruitment and retention, through the partners that you, you work with, that you can leverage these tools to make a difference so that you can make your operations more secure. One of the offensive tactics that is also defensive in a way is training of your associates. Um, 
and it's not necessarily the associates at the store all over, although that is a threat. The bigger area is like your marketing departments and other areas when the shadow IT. Generative AI brings such improvements to productivity for knowledge workers that you're going to find that your associates at the headquarters level keep trying new tools and thus potentially opening up uh, security situations. At the end of the day, it's the CISO's job to protect the data and to protect the operations there. AI is only as good as the data. Data is the fuel for AI and modern retail operations. You have to protect that at all costs. If that gets corrupted, it has a great detrimental effect on the performance of the operation. One of the key areas that you can take advantage of is predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics when it comes to using AI. And this is to secure things all throughout the operations, particularly when you're adding new IoT devices at the store level, at the supply chain level, perhaps you have people bringing their own devices into your stores, into your operations. Those are all areas where things need to be locked down on your network so that that data is secure. One of the areas that's an opportunity is that continuous monitoring of the operations and what's going on so that you can detect threats extremely fast, as well as identifying the vulnerabilities in your networks at the local level, as well as broad at the enterprise level to make a difference. Now, some of these things are very, very huge undertakings and they have a lot of costs associated with them and they're focused specifically on large enterprise operations. But that doesn't mean there aren't situations as well for smaller operations. The hacker doesn't really care. They're just looking for a vulnerability that they can exploit. And whether that is a ransomware attack or something else, they're gonna be focused on where is the open ports that they can exploit to get into the system. But it's not just at the operational level, it's also through the vendor level that interface with your organizations. If you have a vendor that gets compromised and they come to your store and tap into your network, you are now compromised if you don't have the right security in place to, to block those attempts. Overall, AI can be a huge benefit in terms of operational efficiency for the security operations, but we have an exponential increase in threats that are coming from AI as well. When you think about security, it comes straight from the top down in Microsoft. Satya has been very public in his statements about the importance of security, the commitment to security, and that's not just uh, to Microsoft customers, but the importance around security around all AI initiatives. I think it starts with a strong governance. So when you're thinking about that, having that in place as a framework to ensure that responsible AI use is what's happening in your organization, with your consumers, with every facet of how you're leveraging the capabilities of it. And I think, you know, when you think about the risk-based approach, you know, I think that the world will become more comfortable with some of this uh, release of control. Uh, and I think we'll realize that the guardrails that we're putting around the information flow and the capabilities of AI will become more institutionalized in our thinking and less of that sort of a scary feeling that we must think about all the time. Where they're like, wait, how is that happening? How did they do that? And who's um, ex accessing my data at any point in time? There's the perspective of what do I do before I use AI period in my environment? And then there's the perspective of what AI am I going to sponsor or sanction in the organization? If you don't develop a policy by which your engineers, your delivery folks, even people who work just in the productivity and collaboration side of things, HR, marketing, legal, et cetera, if you don't coach and provide a path towards specific AI use case, people are just going to find it on their own. To give an example, maybe you don't want ChatGPT to be used in the organization, but if you don't develop your own AI tool through OpenAI Studios or give access to your users to something else that you do authorize and sanction because you have a governance and risk policies around it, they're still just going to go figure out how to use the thing that allows them to be more productive and more effective. So just know that from the intention of being as productive and as awesome at their jobs as possible, the people that we surround ourselves with in our organizations are going to constantly figure out innovative ways to get things done. And we always got to imagine that they're going to come to their own conclusions unless as an organization we're building policies and offering guidance and developing an AI campaign.
when you use these tools in a zero trust environment, you can protect the operation in real time. These threats are coming at all times, all day long, and having that zero trust factor along with the AI tools can be a major improvement to how you secure your operations. I'd call out five key things. One of them is threat model framework. So AI can enhance cybersecurity by identifying patterns and anomalies in large data sets, and that creates realistic simulations and reducing vulnerabilities. And this approach can streamline the development process and increase the security of applications. Second, there is secure AI reference architecture. So AI can be used in real-time applications and automation of capabilities, such as detecting and classifying vast amounts of data to find patterns or continuations. And that can include both traditional and generative AI, which understands and creates content. Third, I would say it's threats to data across AI processes. And then fourth, you can look at AI security risk management. Finally, I would think about advanced prevention and threat detection, specifically about how you can make sure that you have those threat detection capabilities. And those tools can help in building a business place for everything from cloud adoption or planning a clear path forward for a cloud journey and providing insights on AI innovation. Some layers to AI that I think are important here. The AI that is taking the world by storm right now is generative AI. And generative AI is a kind of technology interface where I can talk to the AI tool in human language. It will interpret what I'm asking for because it's trained on a massive human language model. It will decide what it is I'm trying to accomplish, whether it's build a marketing campaign or detect threats. And then it will activate some kind of programmatic feedback loop in order to do that thing. That doesn't exactly happen in real time though with the generative AI tools. It does require prompting essentially. So the way that you allow AI to facilitate an outcome in real time is to connect the AI to the existing sensors that are available. And what do I mean by sensors? Technology that's sitting in the environment on a device potentially or in a cloud container watching for bad activity to happen. And as soon as it detects that that bad activity is happening, it's gonna send a message to the mothership saying, I see a malicious payload got dropped on this device. What generative AI has the capability of doing from there on top of that initial detection strategy is to fire off a message over Teams or send off a message over Outlook or Exchange or through the mail system. and Instead of just putting an alert on a console for a security operations center analyst to say, hey, something's bad's happening on this you know, particular device, let me go do something about it. You can start to automate some of the outcomes leveraging the generative AI technology, meaning if you see this, fire off this email from this pre-formatted you know, messaging campaign template that says, hey, we noticed the following things are happening. We cut a ticket in the ticketing system. We assigned it to the security operations group. We also revoked the MFA token of the users involved so they can't continue to log into the system. We're sending this email just so you know that there's a paper trail. So the real time component is really going to be dependent on the technologies in place to do the initial detection. And those detections themselves are based on some AI capabilities like machine learning. But once that happens, we have the ability to form the automation response in the triggers that can batten down the hatches and remove the amount of manual attention we have to apply as humans. So things that normally require humans to intervene, to send that email or send that team's message, AI more and more is gonna be able to finish that last mile of work that sometimes takes a lot of human time. We saw that when using AI in retail security goes bad with Rite Aid, who put together a system that identified shoplifters and then you know, actually did the identification and followed them so that when they came back, you could say, hey, you, you need to target that person. But of course, the AI was very inaccurate. And so they targeted the wrong people and hassled the wrong people. They also didn't uh, properly inform people that they were being identified as is, uh, you know, against the law. So really, you got to follow kind of the federal laws. But more importantly, you need to think through what are the right vendors and what are the right ways to collect the data? There's a company who's very effective in using AI in retail security called Flock Safety, who's doing license plate readers and gunshot detection. And they keep the data for 30 days and then it, it disappears. They work very closely with law enforcement to make sure they're in line with the local, state, and federal 
regulations. And then additionally, you know, they are able to put together patterns of behavior in a, in a pseudo anonymous way so that you can actually target the right criminal activity only and not target, you know, people in their normal every day. And the result they're seeing is 20 to 30 percent reductions in crime. And so there are the right ways to do that. You just need to find a vendor that you trust and you need to be aware of all the state, local and national laws. And you really need to think about how to anonymize and avoid, you know, specifically, you know, identification and biometric identification. When we think about, you know, talking to CISOs and what CISOs should be, CISOs should be considering with regard to generative AI, I want to go back and think about the fact that what drives AI is really data. At some point, we're talking about just data storage. Now we're talking about data lakes. It's a lot of data involved in driving AI. And so the first thing you want to think about is securing that data, which is one of the principles of a responsible AI, making sure that we protect customer data and making sure that the data is secure, making sure you understand who has access to the data, who's using it, and if we have the notice and consent to use the data the way it's being used. The other thing I also think about is the fact that security is really the foundation of AI. If there's no security, then your customers can't trust you and opens up the risk of um, reputational damage. So especially in, in retail industry, you want to think about brand loyalty, customer trust, and all of that comes with them protecting data. One of the major things to consider is your core existing systems in place today. You have a lot of legacy systems in most retail environments, and many of those may not have been patched properly. So having the latest software from your vendors is a key consideration up front. But as well, you may choose different vendors simply because they cannot be secure enough in how they do things. And uh, it's remarkable in many retail environments, we have systems that are older than the people working there in place. And they're just simply inadequate when it comes to protecting an, an age of AI and threat vectors. Next is how do you manage the data and how do you allow for the data to be used ethically within your organization? That is often the purview of the CIO, but it often uh, comes together with the CISO. Uh, in a smaller retailer, there isn't a CISO. It's, it's all one person that is taking that role, and they may be the CFO as well. And so you have to take into consideration your operations and what's the best way to take advantage of AI in the most ethical way that you can use that AI without coming off creepy to your customers and leveraging that. If you're providing content how do you use AI, but also retain authenticity, particularly authenticity to the brand? That's generally a more of a marketing component, but it's also an operational a component that the CISO should be uh, looking into because that data quality at the end of the day for which those marketing messages are being built is the responsibility of the CISO, protecting that and making sure that does not get corrupted. Next is skill development. One of the biggest challenges is there's not enough people in the industry that know cybersecurity, uh, but certainly cybersecurity in the age of AI. And if you do find them, they're extremely expensive. So how do you get those people? How do you retain those people? Do you need to do that yourselves or do you need to outsource that operation? If you're a smaller company, it's likely you're going to have to outsource that operations because you're not going to be able to recruit or retain really qualified people in the area of cybersecurity. They just simply get too costly. So going to a third party operator or a managed security services provider can be a huge help to retailers of all sizes when it comes to protecting the data. The other thing is vendor management. You've got to be concerned about your vendors a lot more in the age of AI. Um, it's not we're, we're just not internet connected. We're internet connected on steroids when it comes to AI because of the number of threats. Every day I get requests for everybody in my organization to change their payroll and to change their banking. That is not the only thing, and those are pretty obvious, but these phishing attempts have gotten so much more sophisticated, and they seem to be growing by leaps and bounds every single day. And thus, the ability to manage those security situations across your entire enterprise, uh, but also with your vendors and your suppliers as well, 
is a key thing that I'm sure keeps CISOs up at night there. Then you've got to be concerned about the shadow IT. These operations with generative AI are so pervasive and there's so many new ones coming at all times that nearly every department benefits and they're tempted to use these tools and take advantage of these tools and thus expose company data where it shouldn't be because it hasn't been vetted properly by the CIO or the IT organization. So that is a major consideration there. How do you allocate your budget? Where does that security budget go? Uh, the IT budget is not unlimited. And although AI can drive additional budget from the marketing side of the business and the operational side of the business into an IT budget, those budgets are limited and you have to make good decisions as to where you're gonna spend that money to properly secure the operations. And then finally, most retailers operate in a highly regulated environment, whether that's government regulations or whether that's industry regulations. How do you use AI to make sure you are compliant in those areas? For certainly public retailers have to be concerned about the financial data and making sure that that doesn't get out in advance and is a right to know that data because of stocks and market manipulation. The ability to stay in line with the local regulations and national regulations and to be compliant with those is a major challenge for the CISO. It's part of the role of the CFO and the chief operating officer, but the purviewer of the data, the one who has to secure the data and make sure it's accurate, comes under the line of the CISO in most organizations. Smaller companies should really look at manage service providers or manage security service providers to help with their efforts. They're not going to be able to do it alone. The ability to get outside help to identify the threats and mitigate the threats that are coming their way is absolutely crucial to their operations. Uh, smaller retailers cannot do it alone. And quite frankly, larger operators, with the exception of the top five or six, cannot do it alone simply because there's not enough qualified security staff out there. There are huge needs and huge holds of cybersecurity professionals that are needed, not only at the state level, but also at the individual company level. And as a result, the need to use an external partner is all the more important. So one of the biggest areas of potential benefit for retailers is the use of AI in security. In fact, across the Americas, we estimate that AI can bring over $260 billion and improved efficiencies to the operations by being that ultimate force multiplier for your staff, as well as external parties that you bring in as part of your support and security team. Now we're talking just about the IT security here. We're not talking about the cost of physical security or savings because you avoided a breach, but simply just the savings around better efficiencies at protecting your networks within the operation. So the job of a CISO is very challenging because they really have to look across the entire landscape of a company to ensure the right controls are in place. They've got really well-trained individuals who can help spot when an attack happens, and they've got the right partners or resources in place to respond uh, in real time if there is an attack. Given how challenging this job has always been, there's a number of things that CISOs think about when implementing any new technology. Do we have the right testing in place? Do we have the right safeguards in place? Have we thought about what new data we're collecting? Have we thought about how that data is going to be used? Have we thought about what users might have access to this data? Do they have the right permissions? Have we protected their endpoints and applications? The thing about AI technologies that I think is complicating the CISO's job even further is just how pervasive the use of this technology can be within an organization. If you think about it, let's say a development organization decides to switch from using R to Python, and there may be some security implications that Python has better opportunities to code against potential cyber attacks. That's a very small subset of your employees that, frankly, are kind of used to being you know, asked to work within a set of development parameters. But when we think about generative AI and the ability to ask questions in natural language, of documents, of data that exists out um, in the world that exists within your organization, it's a lot harder to manage. Every user out there is going to be able to ask questions of data. So thinking about how pervasive this technology really is, could be used by HR, by finance, 
by your store operations, by your merchandising teams, by your marketing teams. So the most important thing is having a company-wide policy around responsible use of AI. With all the consumers that have already been experimenting with generative AI, we have to assume that every one of our employees is using tools like ChatGPT in their personal lives. They're going to come to rely on it. They're going to come to really appreciate the efficiency or creativity that they can achieve with it. And they're going to want to do that at work. So being very clear on what are the responsible use policies in your organization, what are the tools that you're going to make available to your associates, your employees that will fit within the guardrails that you've set up for your organization is just all the more important when it comes to generative AI because of how vast the population of employees in your organization is that could be using it. Key considerations for CISOs that are looking to adopt technologies, actually where to start. You're not just going to have a plan. You won't automatically have a roadmap. You might have been to a conference and seen some emerging AI technology do something neat. You might have been doing some reconnaissance on your user's behavior and determined that they're already using certain AI tools and you're already a little bit behind the curve to figure it out. But I think that every AI technology that's available, especially the Microsoft AI technology that I support at my company, Blue Foyant, has dependent technology that's required to drive operational excellence out of the technology. So a service that my company performs at no cost is something called a readiness assessment, where we wanna give CISOs the comfort and confidence to know that their requisite technology is deployed properly in order to get really good results. For instance, those sensors that live on devices to look at after the device itself and see if bad things are happening, those all need to be deployed ahead of time and attack surfaces minimized as much as possible before the AI tools are going to produce really good results. If you ask an AI technology to go find something, it's only going to be able to find it if some requisite technology is capturing that alert telemetry or that incident history and feeding it properly to the AI tool. So what I'm seeing a lot of is CISOs are activating and buying emerging AI technology without always understanding how it works and what's going to allow it to work even better and how they can maximize the utility of the investments they're making in the AI technology is understanding what those mission critical dependencies are that allow the AI to actually do a good job. If you're not watching devices or you're not watching as users move from one part of the cloud environment in your digital estate to another, from Microsoft to AWS to GCP, or whether they're moving from Teams to SharePoint to OneDrive or OneNote, and you, you're not actually capturing that information, your AI is not gonna be super useful. So I would start with a readiness assessment of some kind that allows you to really determine where your, your use cases are and the opportunities for you to get significant outcomes out of AI. In this new age, the reputation of the retailer often comes down to how you protect the data of your consumers. Every day we hear about different breaches that are happening across companies of all types. And if that happens to you as a retailer, you're going to spend 10x the number of dollars required to retain a customer as you might have been able to do to prevent the hack in the first place. So that data security that reputation of the brand through data security is all the more critical in the age of AI.